<laughs> I knew you'd be back. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna tackle Beth I and I. This program was created by W, the step resident I and I master. Beth I and I, pronounced Bethany. Okay, that settles it. It's pronounced Bethany. It is an attempt to restore decency to the I and I configuration files for games created by Bethesda. Okay, let's do it. Let's go and download it. Files, manual download, and save it. All right, let's open up that download file. Take a peek at this uh, zip archive. All right, open up your mod folder and drag this folder right on over. Cool, close up the zip, close up the mod folder, delete the download. Cool. Okay, run Beth and E outside of Mod Organizer 2 and make sure Mod Organizer 2 is closed or changes won't take effect. Close Mod, Ar mod Organizer. Boom. So now let's run Beth uh, Bethany. I keep wanting to say Beth and Beth I and I. All right. So open up your mod folder, go into Bethany, standalone, and click the executable. Double click. Rather. Choose your game. Skyrim Special Edition. All right, great. I'm gonna close the summary of changes. Boom. All right, let's drag this over. Make some room. All right, select a profile you wish to use via the I and I path setting. This is under the setup tab. So click on setup. And uh, we choose our profile through the I and I path here. It's pretty cool. It automatically located out of Modern Organizer 2 for me. Anyways, uh, click on, yeah, not my game, the Special Edition. We don't want that. Let's go down. Oh, right there, look at that. It automatically detected our profiles here. Very cool. So, choose Legacy of the Dragon Ball Special Edition. Your INI files are successfully reverted. Good. INI path change, application restart. By all means, go right ahead. Uh, Beth I Bethany has the ability to modify the game's custom INI files. I found to match any changes you make, recommended. Do you want to allow Bethany to do this? Make sure modify custom INI is option options unchecked. So I guess we're gonna say no. All right, no. Summary of changes, close. All right, under the basics tab, this is where we're at. Click the default button, click. This will refresh your INI files to be default settings for your system with minimal tweaks. Click on high preset, click. Make sure the Bethany preset option is checked. Presets rather, and it is. Step four, make sure recommended tweaks is checked. Here it is, check. Make sure windowed mode is checked. Windowed mode is indeed checked. Step six, make sure borderless is checked. Borderless is now checked, check. Make sure FXAA is unchecked. It is indeed unchecked. Make sure anti-aliasing is set to none. That's here, set it to none. And if you're wondering why, it's because we're gonna let the ENB handle all anti-aliasing. Make sure VSync is unchecked, VSync unchecked. Make sure lock frame rate is unchecked. Lock frame rate unchecked. Under the Generals tab, General. Make sure Intro logo is unchecked. It is indeed unchecked. Make sure Post Load Update Time is 2000. Post Load Update Time is indeed 2000. Under Gameplay tab, Gameplay. Make sure Over Encumbered Reminder is set to 60. Over Encumbered Reminder is set to 30. Let's go to 60. Done. Make sure MC use ammo is checked. It is checked. Make sure first person arrow tilt up angle is 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Make sure third person arrow tilt angle is 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Make sure first person bolt tilt up is 0 0.7. And it is. Okay. Now under the interface tab right here, click. Make sure the Bethesda modding platform is unchecked. That's right here, uncheck. Now make sure mouse settings, lock sensitivity is 0 0.0125. Lock sensitivity is indeed 0 0.0125. Now we're gonna go to the details tab right here, click. Make sure reflect sky is checked. Let's find that. Uh, reflect sky is indeed checked. Make sure field of view is set to 85. Field of view is set to 80. Okay, we're gonna manually enter it, 85, enter. 
Make sure particles is set to 2000. Particles is set to 2000. Make sure depth of field is checked. Let's find depth of field. Oh, that's right here. Uh, it is checked. Make sure lens flare is unchecked. Lens flare is now unchecked. Make sure shadow resolution is 2048. It is indeed. Make sure shadow bios bias is set to 0.47. Hit shadow bias. Okay, let's manually enter it. 0 0.47. Good. Make sure sun shadow transition is unchecked. It is unchecked. Now make sure ambient occlusion is unchecked. Let's find it. Here it is. And now it is now unchecked. Under the view distance tab, view distance right here. Click. Make sure grass fade is set to 18,000. Grass fade. I'm just going to manually enter that. 18,000. Under the visuals tab. It's right next to view distance right here. Click. Make sure grass density is set to 60. Here's grass density. Let's set it to 60. Very good. Make sure grass diversity is set to 15. 15. Make sure improved shader is unchecked. Let's find improved shader. It's right here. It is indeed unchecked. Now under basic tab, we're going to click save and exit. All right, very good. Those ionizers are set, but there's more. While Bethany does handle the vast majority of the tweaks needed to the INI files. A few need to be changed manually. This will be done via MO2's INI editor. So let's close this out and open up Modernizer 2. Okay. And to access view, click on the tools icon in MO2 uh, toolbar, then select the INI editor. The tools icon is right here, next to the wrench expander right here. Click, go to INI editor. Very good. Once open, make sure the following changes. If the option does not appear, add it. Skyrim.ini and Skyrimprefs.ini files can be edited using the INI built editor built into MO2 from the toolbar. Click on tools icon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Skyrim.ini. We're already there. Let's find save game. You can scroll down, look for it. I'll try to eyeball it. Or you can press Control F. First click somewhere, then Control F. Let's type in save game. Find next. Boom, there it is, close that out. All right, so we have some B, disable auto save. We don't have that here, so let's go ahead and add it. Now let's go ahead and go and come over here. B, disable auto save, that is not there, neither is the other two here. So what I'm doing is highlighting my mouse over here and you see copy right here, okay? Come back over here, highlight all of this. Save game and auto save count three. Then right click, actually let's keep auto save. Let's just highlight save game here. Then click paste. Boom. There we go. All right. That's it for Skyrim.ini. Now let's go to Skyrimprefs.ini. That's up here. Click on it. Now let's find display. Here's display. Scroll down. Now we're looking for BSAO enable. Okay. Here it is. BSAO enable. It's already set to zero. Remember, you could always press uh, Control F to search for that entry if you're having trouble eyeballing it. Now let's go to main. I'm scrolling down, there's main. And now we need to uh, save on pause, save on rest, save on travel, save on wait. They're all right here. We're basically gonna zero all of those. So pause is already zero. Change rest on rest to zero, on travel to zero, and on wait, whoops, to zero. There. All right, dude, and the reason why we're doing that, it's explained right here, due to the heavily modded nature of this guide, it is advised to have auto saves turned off and to create fresh new saves every time and not overwrite old pre-existing saves. All right. All right, having done that, we can go ahead and just click save and close it. And it's asking us if we want to save Skyrim.ini. Yeah, click yes. Very good. Skyrim custom.ini. Oh, yeah, you may have noticed that right here, and we didn't even mess with it. Skyrim custom.ini is created by, by Bethany and can be used to overwrite settings placed in Skyrim.ini. For the purposes of this guide, we will use a blank copy of this file placed in the Legacy of Dragonborn Special Edition profile that you will use to actually play the game. So we're not, we're not messing with this right now. All right. And for the final thing we're going to do in this video that isn't necessarily related to Bethany is this uh, skse.ini entry that we're going to create. Uh, before you can edit the skse.ini file, you will have to create it. So right click on skse scripts, referring to this right here in Mod Organizer. We're going to right click on it, select Open in Explorer. We're going to create a folder and call it skse. 
new folder. I call it SKSE. I'm using my caps lock. Doesn't matter. Let's open that. And now we're gonna create a text file. So right click, new text document. Very good. And we're gonna call this SKSE.ini. So rename that SKSE.ini, enter. If you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you wanna do this? Yes, we do. Very good. Once this file is open to be edited, paste in the following. So mousing over, clicking on this right here, copy. Then open this skse.ini you just created. Boom. Then right click, paste. Boom. And we have our entry. This enables self-healing of rogue updating scripts and saves. And then we can save it and close it. And you guessed it, we're done with this video. Good job, guys. I'm very proud of you for sticking with the guide up to this point. Um, for me, I find this process fun. I call it adult Legos. And uh, just following Lexi's guide step by step and taking it slow and just uh, slowly piecing this together. Yeah, feels like adult Legos. I just entered this flow state that induces just this bliss like um, feeling over me. I hope you guys are getting a similar feeling. Well, anyways, have a great day, guys. In the next video, we're going to get into uh, NPC Chooser. All right, have a good one.